Wait, who are you? The voices in my head told me to do it. I haven't eaten in four days. I feel so alone and I just can't deal with it anymore. Make sure you put that book back right where you got it. When hearing these sentences together, they might be a little confusing and they may not make a whole lot of sense. These statements are used to show the multiple kinds of mental illnesses there are and what you may hear if you know someone with a mental illness. 57.7 million people are affected by some type of mental illness each year and so being aware of these disorders is very important because you never know when or how you could be affected. Throughout this speech, I am going to discuss the basics of mental illnesses. I will inform you about the categorization of mental illnesses, the specific types, symptoms, and the reasonings on why mental illnesses happen, and also the treatments of mental illnesses. To first start off, I'm going to talk about the categorization of mental illnesses. According to Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, mental illnesses refer to deregulation of mood, thought, and or behavior. Another definition from Medicine Net defines it as the way a person thinks, feels, behaves, <clears throat> and or relates to his or her surroundings. Mental illnesses affect basic human functions such as forming healthy relationships, adapting to change, and being productive in work, school, and caregiving. Many people are embarrassed or ashamed when they are diagnosed with a mental illness, but mental illnesses are extremely common. 43.6 million people ages 18 or older, or 18.1% of the adult population, suffers, suffer from some type of mental illness, says the National Survey on Drug Use and Health. As you can see from this picture, this shows the mental illness prevalence in the United States. States with the lowest amount of mental illness include states like Alaska, North and South Dakota, and Pennsylvania. States with the highest amount of mental illness are states like Oregon, Idaho, Utah, and Colorado. Nebraska actually ranks in the middle with only having 4.40 to 4.70% of people with a mental illness. There are hundreds of different types of mental illnesses and mental illnesses vary immensely. A mental illness can be slightly mild and interfere only partially. This can be something like phobias. A mental illness can also be very severe, which may <clears throat> require hospitalization. The severity of someone's mental illness can be categorized by if it's in full or partial remiss remission, if the person experienced one or multiple episodes, and how severe the symptoms of the mental illness is. Now that we have gone over the categorization of mental illnesses, I will now discuss the specific types, symptoms, and the reasoning of mental illnesses. As I mentioned before, there are hundreds of different types of mental illnesses. The five main categories of mental illnesses include anxiety disorders, mood disorders, psychotic disorders, eating disorders, and dementia. Anxiety disorders are things like panic disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD, post-traumatic stress disorder, which is PTSD, and social phobia. Symptoms that are related to anxiety disorders include things like panic attacks, physical symptoms such as pain, nausea, and headaches, nightmares, obsessive thoughts, and fear of leaving the house. Mood disorders are the most common type of mental illness in the entire world. These are better known as depression and bipolar disorder. If someone you know is experiencing mood changes that impacts their everyday life, they may be experiencing symptoms of depression. Bipolar disorder is defined as a brain disorder that causes changes in a person's mood, energy, and ability to function. <clears throat> bipolar disorder has two different sides, manic and depressive episodes. A manic episode may leave a person having lots of energy, they may have trouble sleeping, they may be more physically active than normal, and they may make risky decisions. A depressive episode can leave a person feeling sad, lonely, depressed, worried, they may have trouble concentrating, and they may consider suicide. Psychotic disorders are also just known as schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a brain disorder marked by changes and disruptions in cognitive and emotional health, says UPMC Healthbeat. It affects basic human functions such as language, thought, and perceptions. Common symptoms of schizophrenia include hearing voices, hallucinations, delusions, social withdrawal, incoherent speech, and abnormal reasoning. Another main mental illness is eating disorders. These usually begin in adolescent years and occur the most often in females. According to the National Eating Disorders Association, some specific types of eating disorders include anorexia nervosa, which is self-starvation, bulimia nervosa, which is binge eating followed by purging, fasting, or excessive exercise, 
and binge eating disorder, which is uncontrolled eating without the use of laxatives or vomiting. Symptoms of eating disorders include reduction of food intake, overeating, feelings of depression or distress, <clears throat> concern of weight, body shape, or poor self-image. The last main mental illness is dementia. Dementia is the disruption of consciousness and changes in cognitive health, such as memory loss and decrease in motor skills. Dementia can be things like Alzheimer's, head trauma, HIV, Parkinson's, substance-induced dementia caused by drugs, alcohol abuse, inhalants, or exposure to toxins. A mental illness can affect any person of any age, gender, or race. Mental illnesses start with a combination of factors. These can be things like genetics, biology, psychology, or someone's environment. If someone genetically inherits a mental illness, that is due to the fact that a parent or family member carried on that gene to you. Also, if a parent or family member has a mental illness, that doesn't necessarily mean you'll be, you will have a mental illness too. It just means you possess a higher risk for developing one. If someone genetically inherits a mental illness, that is due to the fact that there are problems in multiple genes. Tragic events and interactions of genes cause genetically inherited mental illnesses to become prevalent. If someone biologically gets a mental illness, according to MedicineNet, that is due to the fact that there was an abnormal balance of brain chemicals. When these chemicals are out of balance, the messages don't make it all the way through the brain, thus leading to symptoms of mental illnesses. Defects or injury of the brain can lead to a mental illness as well. Psychological trauma, like child sufferings, like emotional, physical, sexual abuse, early loss of a parent, or neglect can lead to a mental illness as well. Things in people's environments can cause a mental illness to develop as well. This can be things like death of a family member, divorce, dysfunctional family life, and change of jobs or schools. If someone is at risk for developing a mental illness, substance abuse can trigger the disorder for the person. Now that we've talked about the specific types, symptoms, and the reasoning behind mental illnesses, we can finally go on to talk about how to treat these illnesses. Physical Mental illnesses are approached similarly like treating a physical ailment. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, adults in the United States with a serious mental illness die on average 25 years earlier due to not getting mental, due to not getting treatment. With that being said, getting treatment if you are diagnosed with a mental illness is extremely important. When treating an anxiety disorder, doctors expose the patient to the obsession or object that makes them anxious. They prescribe medications such as antidepressants and they recommend counseling and therapies. Mood disorders can be treated, but many individuals do not have access to treatment or they don't take advantage of the services. If no action is taken, it can become a chronic disease. Even experiencing just one episode of depression puts someone at a 50% higher risk of experiencing another episode. Depression and bipolar disorder can be treated with medication such as antidepressants, visits with psychiatrists, psychologists, mental health counselors, and taking part in interpersonal therapy. The psychotic disorder schizophrenia can be treated with medications, psychotherapy, mood stabilizers, psychosocial interventions, behavioral therapies, rehabilitation, and mutual support groups. The eating disorders can be treated with psychotherapy, counseling, and med medical and nutritional needs. This will tackle the psychological, biological, cultural, and interpersonal forces that cause the eating disorder. Dementia can be treated with medication therapies such as occupational, music, pet, and massage therapy, and ingesting different vitamins can also help in the treatment of dementia. Unfortunately, mental illnesses cannot be prevented. According to the Mayo Clinic, paying close attention to warning signs, receiving regular health care, getting help when needed, and just taking care of yourself can all help in preventing the development of a mental illness. When coping or dealing with a mental illness, Mental Health America says that one should accept his or her feelings, be, handle their behaviors appropriately, reach out for, to a support system, get counseling, and just take time out for themselves. There are hundreds of different types of mental illnesses. They vary immensely, and there's dozens of symptoms that go along with them. Mental illnesses can affect any person of any age, gender, or race. They can be 18 years old, Hispanic, or a successful lawyer. <clears throat> Although mental illnesses cannot be prevented, there are many ways to get help if you are diagnosed with one. 
If you or someone you know is diagnosed with a mental illness, the most important thing to do is to reach out and get help. Don't be embarrassed or ashamed because mental illnesses are extremely common and there's no way of preventing yourself from developing one. Break the stigma of mental illnesses and reach out for help. Mental illnesses aren't a choice, but getting help is.